Hi, and thanks for watching our presentation on ecological models. During the presentation, we are going to cover what exactly the ecological model is, explain its four core concepts, and discuss the journal article about the FAN trial and what role the ecological model plays in that, and finally discuss some advantages and disadvantages. The basis of the eco ecological model is that behavior has multiple levels and it helps us understand how people interact with their environment. Ecological models emphasize the environmental and policy context of behavior while incorporating social and psychological influence as well. We really want you to remember that there are so many influences in our lives, whether they are policies such as the large soda ban in New York City, or something as simple as how many family members you have, and that everything around us plays a role in our health. The basic premise of ecological models is that providing individuals with motivation and skills to change behavior cannot be effective if environments and policies make it difficult or impossible to choose healthful behaviors. The ultimate purpose is to develop a comprehensive intervention approach that can target mechanisms of change at several levels of influence. There are four core concepts of the ecological model, and the first is that there are multiple influences on specific health behaviors, intrapersonal, interpersonal, organizational, community, and public policy. Inclusion of all these levels of influence distinguishes ecological models from theories that primarily focus on one or two levels. And we've all seen some sort of adaptation of this image, and it's a great schematic of the multiple different levels that ecological models must address. It starts with intrapersonal level. Things like our own health status and factors like age and beliefs. Surrounding that are interpersonal influences such as family, peers, and norms. Then moving on, we get to organizational influences such as insurance or worksite wellness. Then to community, things like food availability, eating out and portion sizes, and socioeconomic status. Till we finally reach public policy like the large soda ban or taxing tobacco. The second core concept is that influences on behaviors interact across these different levels. Since there are so many variables at each level of influence, it's difficult to determine which interactions are the most important. As you saw from this image, there are multiple variables at each level of influence. and I'm sure you can all think of more that aren't listed here. We need to keep in mind that all of them must be incorporated in the behavior change process. The third core concept is that ecological models should be behavior specific, identifying the most relevant potential influences at each level. So this kind of addresses the multiple levels and influences from concept two and narrows it down so that it's specific to the person. And by doing that, more long-term effects are created. So an example from the book was that just putting out fruits and vegetables may not have the same effect as putting out the fruits and vegetables and supporting that with communication, education, and motivation. Finally, core concept number four is that multi-level interventions should be most, most effective in changing behavior. Ecological models are the most powerful when they are behavior specific and they've been proven to be successful in targeting health behaviors such as physical activity, tobacco use, and diabetes management. So a couple things that you need to remember about the ecological model and behavior change are that behavior has multiple levels and multiple influences at each level. All influences must be considered when trying to change a behavior and keep interventions behavior specific. 
So now I will pass it over to Mary, who's going to talk about the fan trial. Hi everyone, my name is Mary George and I looked at a research trial that used the ecological model of health behavior in its design. So an example of the use of the ecological model of health behavior is the design of the FAN trial, which stands for uh, Faith, Activity and Nutrition. And uh, their role was to improve health behaviors among African American church members. It was a partnership between the 7th Episcopal District of the African Methodist Church the Medical University of South Carolina, the University of South Carolina, Clemson University, and Allen University. The FAN trial used a community-based participatory approach and the ecological model for its design. And its main objectives were to increase self-reported moderate intensity physical activity, increase fruit and vegetable consumption, and reduce hypertension. Some of the secondary aims were to increase objectively measured moderate intensity physical activity, increase fiber or whole grain consumption, reduce fat consumption, and lastly to assess the role of pastoral support and participation in the intervention. So before we talk about the details of the study design, it would be beneficial to understand some of the main principles of the community-based participatory research and uh, application in the FAN trial. So the, some of the main principles of CBPR are that it recognizes community as a unity of identity. It builds on strengths and resources within the community. It promotes co-learning and capacity building among all partners. It integrates and achieves a balance between research and action. It emphasizes the local relevance of public health problems and ecological perspectives that recognize and attend to the multiple determinants of health and disease. It also facilitates collaborative, equitable partnerships in all phases, and uh, it involves long-term process and commitment. So, moving on to the application, uh, pretty much what they did was they involved the church to bring about healthy behaviors and to improve some of the uh, nutrition behaviors among the African American community. So the strategies for intervention. The interventions of this project included several strategies to bring about the desired behavior outcomes and each targeted physical activity and healthy eating. So the first was to provide availability, accessibility, and physical structures to provide opportunities. Under this, they plan to offer physical activity programs at church before or during service, provide exercise equipment at church, use 10-minute physical activity CDs, offer skills-based classes, have pastors and churches negotiate with health, health clubs and YMCA for discounted memberships. In terms of healthy eating, they plan to serve healthy snacks after exercise, offer skills-based classes, have pastors lead the effort in growing fruits, vegetables, and herbs, and farmers markets to showcase their local produce. They also plan to make sure that the programs were maintained over time. The second strategy was to make opportunities appropriate and fun, because that is important. They tried to make physical activity convenient by building it into existing activities, involve youth in programs, offer exercises appropriate for older adults. For their healthy eating goal, they plan to have a weight loss contest, have a taste of healthy eating monthly, and also health food fairs and offer menu plans for church cooks. They planned on competitions between churches to make the, the activities more fun. Thirdly, we have uh, use of social structures to set organizational guidelines and to provide support. So here the plan was to have physical activity breaks and meetings and have a physical activity ambassador to incorporate physical activity into church activities and functions. They got churches to set policies to include healthy food and beverages at all events and also help cooks prepare healthy foods and provide certificates for those who attend. Also, they established criteria for churches to be considered a healthy church. They also planned on having a health commission and 
uh, include physical activity and healthy eating activities in pastoral reports. Lastly, they used uh, cultural and media messages to spread the word, or they planned on using cultural and media messages to spread the word. So the church leaders were to be role models to support physical activity and nutrition changes. And lastly, they used church channels such as posters, flyers, meetings, etc. to get physical activity and nutrition messages out and also to dispel any myths that were out there. So the use of the ecological model principles in the fan tribe. So the trial used multiple le levels of factors such as interpersonal organization and the community, which is the African American church, to influence healthy behaviors. Their influence interacted across levels. So in addition to providing education, they also provided opportunities during church activities to engage in healthy behaviors. Their interventions were behavior specific. So the physical activity and healthy eating activities that were available at the churches were designed to accomplish the object the objectives of the trial. So as the name suggests, the FAN trial focused on involving the church to improve physical activity and healthy eating behaviors among African Americans. And so since it focused on improving the health of a community and improving more than one health behavior, it was also important to make the environment conducive to accomplishing their objectives. So for more uh, information on this trial, I have included the reference in the reference page. I have included the study article in the reference page. That is the end of my part. Thank you very much. Ecological model presentation for the last part of it. I'm going to talk about the strengths of the theory. It focuses on multiple levels of influence, so it really increases the options for interventions because of that. It also has policy and environmental changes that affect the entire population. So you're not just doing individually, you're doing the whole population. And that's compared to other inter interventions that only affect people who want to participate. It establishes settings and incentives to sustain behavior changes, so hopefully this will be a permanent behavior change and won't be just temporary. The weaknesses of the theory is that it lacks it has a lack of specifics because you can't identify the critical factors of it. It also lacks information because it's, it's on a more a broader level than an individual level and also how it operates across levels. It's not able to identify specific variables or provide guidance to improve the research or the interventions, which was a major challenge of this theory was because it, it does not identify the specific variables, so it's hard with interventions and research. Now I'm going to talk about an example of an ecological model that was represented in the book and that had really had a big advantage from this theory, smoking cessation. Now there's many factors that influence smoking in the individual. First of all, it's an addiction. There's a lot of social life that affects smoking, peer pressure, the, the marketing out there. Also genetics plays a role in smoking. Restrictions does too because there's a lot of areas now that are restricted or you can't smoke at your house so that influ influences smoking and also money influences smoking with the cost of cigarettes now. Now how does it work with the theory? The influences work together. So they work together on an individual and a population level. For an individual level, there's a lot of quitting aids out there for people. You can either buy them at the pharmacy or you have to get a script for them. You can get nicotine replacements, such as nicotine gum, or you can actually get a script from your doctor. There's also different kind of cigarettes out there now that aren't supposed to have the bad things in them. So there's a lot of things that people can do that way. And there's also information out there. There's information everywhere now about lung cancer, about how smoking affects your lungs, there's pamphlets in doctor's offices, there's information on billboards everywhere. There's also self-help, there's individual counseling too. Now a lot of, because smoking is such a big thing in the world today, that a lot of healthcare workers are educated on it and how smoking really can affect a person. So a lot of doctors will influence their patients to stop smoking, to let them know what they're doing to their bodies by smoking. It's also, there's also a population based. So like I said, there's a lot of area places that are restricted now because people 
they don't want people to be smoking and they also don't want people to get lung cancer from secondhand smoke. They don't want people to be in those fumes. So there's that's in restaurants. A lot of restaurants now have only patio outside smoking, not inside smoking, in malls and buildings. Also, media is a big thing now. With stop smoking campaigns, you see in commercials all the time about how people are affected by smoking, and it's really supposed to affect the person to see that that's what's going to happen to me if I don't stop smoking. A tax increase, a lot of cigarettes now are more expensive because they want to try to decrease smokers out there. There's also community-based programs. There's different kind of workshops. There's quit lines. There's anti-smoking campaigns and government reports. So that's an example of an ecological model and how it works on both an individual and population-based level, which is supposed to encourage the good behavior and try to hopefully let it be temp permanent. That's the end of our presentation. Here's our references, and thank you for listening.